back to the control aspect of things, the interface is performed with a standard PC mouse, standard PC keyboard, and a standard PC VGA monitor. Everything else on it is very custom built, and this is the actual CNC control in this area here. This is the entire CNC control right here. You'll see that I've kind of got a rat's nest of wiring that I'll try to keep out of the way as I explain this. But the control itself is built up of four primary modules. Over on this end here, right in this middle area, is the main control. This is the one that, uh, the chip, it's an Atmega 2560 with a memory expansion on it. And this stores the CNC program, performs the um, interpretation of the G-code into motion data, uh, provides uh, the data to another device which displays the information on the screen. So this one is really the main part of the CNC control. Now to get data up to the display, the VGA display, and to get uh, keyboard input and mouse input, we go over to this small circuit board underneath here. And this is where we've got our uh, first propeller chip. All around, this is almost all off-the-shelf uh, software as well as hardware. Um, again, it's a propeller chip. It's an eight-core multitasking chip. And it takes care of the VGA output, the mouse input, and the keyboard input. To get data to display up on the TV screen, I just simply send data from the CPU, or the main CNC part of the control, which is the Atmega 2560, via serial. I send that into this propeller and tell it what to display and where to display it. From there, the propeller takes care of all of the details for me. So I didn't really have to do hardly any coding at all other than to create that simple serial interface for it to know what to display and where. Now up above here, you'll see a, a small dip socket here with a connector here. This will be eventually to allow for serial downloading of CNC programs into the control. You'll also notice an SD flash drive back here. This is where the CNC programs currently get loaded and uh, intermediate data gets stored on there, such as offsets and, and other features of the CNC control. This chip is another Atmega. It's a 644. And what this chip does is it takes that raw uh, dimensional data that comes from the CNC program and it translates it into machine coordinates. So it'll take, uh, say, a, a movement of 10 inches or 10 millimeters, whatever the case may be, translates that into the actual step pulses that are needed at the machine tool. It also does a whole host of other data uh, manipulation to coordinate the three axes of motion. So generically, I call this a motion profiler chip. It does an awful lot of math work, and it can do that, of course, while the CNC portion of the control is going through and queuing up the next block. And, of course, while this is doing its math coprocessing, over here is the final key element of the CNC control, and this board here really is the magic to the whole system. Again, driven by a propeller chip. Eight core or eight uh, microcontroller uh, chip, all contained in one device, so you've got eight tasks running simultaneously. Now the nice part about that is I can devote one task to just serial communications between the motion profiler and uh, the motion controller, which is what I call this module. And I can also take all of my quadrature scales, feed those in directly into the board, and it does the decoding of the quadrature scales and the counting of the positions. It also outputs each of the step and direction signals, and I've got one uh, core, one cog, devoted to each of the step and direction signals, or in other words, uh, one cog goes for x-axis, another cog goes for y, another cog goes for z, and so on. So the multitasking nature of this propeller chip really lends itself well to this type of motion control system. So this guy here is really the workhorse of the entire system. He is responsible for maintaining precise, precise motion and as well as maintaining and checking for the limit switches, counting the position where it's at relative to the encoder scales, and so on. Now there's one more circuit board back here. Uh, this is nothing more than an output board. It's got a series of transistors and read relays. And that allows me to switch on and off some of the higher current devices, such as solenoids and so on. Now we'll walk you through the control real quickly. Uh, obviously there's an awful lot of detail in here, and I don't want to bore everyone to death. 
Over on this side, at the top right corner of the screen, you'll see Edit, Auto, MDI, and Manual. This is, so to speak, your mode select switch. Whether you want to edit a program, go into automatic mode to run a program, MDI for manual data input to enter a command and just execute it, or then simply manual mode for jogging the axes around, typically used during setup. But we can open files up, which are stored on the SD drive, save them back there, change their name, or even start a new program. If we wanted to edit a, a line, we can come over here and say I wanted to edit this line. I would click on it and select Edit Line. That brings it up into the Edit window over here. And of course, I can cursor over and make my changes as I see fit. Now, it is a line-based editor, so it's nothing fancy like you'd see on a typical Windows computer. After all, this is running on a nothing more than a microcontroller. Now, when we switch into automatic mode, and this is where we would run a CNC program, we've got, of course, a run button and a hold button, or I could use the ones on the operator panel. When we get into the manual mode, We've got all of the various uh, controls that I see fit at this time. I can turn on the spindle, stop the spindle, and this is the button I click to uh, unclamp the spindle, and then click it again to clamp the tool again. We've got an air blow feature. Um, you will need to reference the machine at the start of the cycle so that it has one origin point. So you jog over to one area on your machine, click Reference All, and all three axes will go seek out the limit switch in the direction that you specify in the configuration parameters. Uh, for jogging, I've got continuous jog, so that would be like a joystick jog where I hold the joystick, and you'll see the axes moving here as so I'm moving the x-axis, and then y-axis and z-axis, just simply moving the joystick. I've got full control of with of the velocity with my feed override command. So I'll turn that down and it goes very slow to, of course, very fast. 